Hey everybody. Hello everybody. Hey everybody. It's Brock. This is Brock. And we got a new episode with another episode of All About. Of All About. All About. What's up everybody? It's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About today and it is finally here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are doing an All About Coral video. Hope y'all are as excited as I am. Things on the page will change a little bit. We will split up the playlist now. So we're going to have an all about fish playlist and all about corals playlist. And then all about whatever else we do. If I do things about my tank or equipment and stuff like that. So check those out. And also what I'm going to do is change the fish one to instead of being recent videos, it'll be in alphabetical order now. So if you're looking for a fish that you're not sure if I did a video on, it'll be a whole lot easier to look through that extremely long list that is now over 150 fish to go and find what you're looking for but here we are today the first coral we're going to learn about is the bulb anemone so there's a bunch of different bulb anemones you can get out there most of the ones you will see though are the greens and the rose bulb anemones some people do have a little bit crazier ones like the rainbow bulb anemone there's a black widow bulb anemone and I've even seen some white spotted bulb anemones. They're all super pretty and great to have prices on them. So with the greens, you'll probably spend about $30 on. Roses, they jump up to about $60. And then for those special ones that people have that you normally don't see online, they're normally just people selling them out of their little frag racks. You can bet they're going to put an easy $100 to $200 price tag on them, guys. Prices, so that's all of those. Care level, super easy. It is an anemone. There isn't too much care to it. Temperature, you want to keep it a solid 78. I have gone a little warmer on them before and they tended to shrink up. So I think 78 is like perfect for them. DKH, 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. That's normal. Salinity is 1.023 to 1.025. With coral, you want to keep it tight. Keep it right in the middle. Of course, the colors, the greens, the rose, the rainbows, the only real reason they call them rainbows is because they have a lot more green in the center of them. And then the black widows, I haven't really seen much of a difference with those. They just kind of have a little bit more jaggedy design if you look up close to them. And then, of course, the white spotted it has a bunch of white spots all over the red. So diet, these guys have a mouth right in the middle of them, as you can see. They will eat shrimp that's from the grocery store. That's the best thing I feed them. It's the easiest. Just throw out a piece, cut up a little bitty piece, and make sure you don't give them too big of a piece because whatever they do not want, they will just spit out, and that will just end up floating around in your tank, and you don't want that. They will also eat liquid food. A lot of times whenever I squirt oyster feast or row in my power heads to blow around for the corals to grab, they will also grab that. So that's something to think about. And then even some coral pellets you can throw on them and they'll grab those. Now these are the best anemones to get for hosting clownfish. They are the ones I have used for forever and the clowns always get up in them. And if you do have a clownfish that has hosted them, they will actually feed them for you. So you don't have to worry about that. But still, if you want to get that good size and girth out of these anemones, you will need to feed them. What's next? Origin. These guys do come out of Indonesia and Singapore. Venomous. Yes, these guys are very venomous on the ends of their tentacles. They almost have basically like a needle that can shoot out and that's how they get you with the venom. For us, they cannot sting your hand because your pores are so tight for the venom to get through. But if they hit you somewhere like on your forearm where I've been hit a bunch of times reaching down in deep tanks and they sting me when I'm not paying attention. They will get you like that a bunch of the times. It feels like a bee sting, but a whole bunch of them, depending on how many tentacles actually hit you. Best thing to do is just run it under some hot water and then kind of clean it off with some alcohol. And then it will still sting and itch for a couple of days. But eventually those red spots will go away. Placement, really, anemones can be anywhere. These bulb anemones, you can place them at the very top of your tank. And we have some that have been at the very bottom of tanks. Current wise, you can give them no current or a bunch of current. What I've really noticed is if you put them in no current, they tend to bulb up where they get their name. 
but if you put them in a lot of current they get the real long tentacles which you'll see in the video not sure of your lighting being good enough for them if you will just leave a comment down below that's the best thing the easiest way to do it because if i just list up a whole bunch of parameters and stuff your lights might might not be like that so list your model and name down below and i'll let you know if your tank can handle this anemone i think we're getting about to the end of it i know on the bottom of them they do have what i call a foot and whenever you after you get done acclimating them and you want to put them in your tank make sure to turn off all your power heads and place them wherever you want and if you will just lightly hold your hand over them to keep them there that foot will actually grab on to it now whenever you put them where you want them they might move a little bit to the left or the, to the right or they might go behind the rock to put their foot in somewhere they normally like it deep up in a cave and then they spread out around so just be patient the worst thing you can do is get in there and move them multiple times in a short period of time because that's just going to stress them out a lot of times they get back behind a rock trying to find a spot to put their foot and people think they're hiding from the light and then they go in and move the rock structure and you're just stressing them out even more trust me these guys can move so if they're not getting enough light just be patient with them and let them move around on their own and they will get over to where they can get some light what else can I tell you about the anemone? Feeding's pretty simple about the, uh, like whenever you feed a shrimp, just throw it right in the middle of him and his tentacles will wrap around it real quick and he swallows it pretty fast. What else we got? Anemones will sting your corals. So make sure whenever you do put these in there, just have an idea of this guy's gonna spread out and his stingers will, anything it touches, it will sting it. Anemones are one of the ones that beat like any coral. The only coral I've ever seen beat an anemone and sting in it is a torch coral. So you're looking at putting them in a spot that corals around him aren't there. Now, size wise, if you feed them really good, you can bet these guys can get a foot long. A lot of one of the ones you see in the videos are very large ones we have in our show tanks. So just be aware that he can take up a bunch of room if he does get big. They do split, but it is kind of random. I've tried to time it to see how long it would take, but in the end, the results were just too random to try to pick. But whenever they do split, they do form two mouths, and then they cut, basically cut themselves in half, and then you'll have two anemones. Feeding them is the best way to get them to split more often. Uh, Feeding-wise, you will just have to see how often your anemone wants to be fed. Normally per week once one piece of shrimp per week is normally what we do at the shop at the house i feed them about every other week they tend to like that so you'll just have to see if he's spitting out the shrimp too much and you can just tell he doesn't want that much food during the week just cut it back some anemones are really weird they do some weird things in the tank that customers freak out about a lot they can shrink down to i'm talking like a quarter size and then the next day they'll swell up like nothing ever happened to them. Mainly that is because of their digestion. They do that a lot, especially after feeding. So don't freak out if that happens. He is just doing his thing. But after a couple of days, if he's still doing it, that's when I would start to worry and figure out what's going on. I think that's it though. If y'all have any more questions, things y'all want me to hit on on corals, please leave them down below. This is a brand new thing we're doing. so trying to figure out my flow on things on how I want to go about talking about corals but I hope I gave y'all a really good video on how to take care of a bulb anemone hope y'all have a good day make sure to like and subscribe and check out the new playlist that I will be updating and getting ready for y'all hitting nine minutes on this video it takes a lot longer to talk about a taking care of a coral than it is a fish they are really fragile but they are really pretty hope y'all have a good day I will see y'all later